So when when we okay. uh, so uh, so this hello everyone. Uh, my name is Amit Kumar Singh, and I'm going to teach you the subject called operation research. So basically, uh, the subject operation research when we talk, that the subject came in picture during World War Two. So when when the World War was at peak, and when the British Army they were about to lose the so that time a group of scientists from all the discipline they all came together and they they came together and the, the strategies for which uh, they can they can uh, about the maximum utilization of the resources available with them so that time the the discipline they hello uh, sir that time the discipline what they developed uh that was basically called as operation research so this operate the subject operation research when we talked about so you can already i think everyone can see my screen so uh, this op this operation research as a term uh it was coined in 1940 so in the year 1940 uh so there were uh, two scientists called mcconzy and tefton uh, they came up with this term called operation research so what operation research is all about operation research is is uh ha huh. so when we talk about operation research operation research is all about uh, it is a scientific method of formulating uh, the specific purpose and plan for aiding quantitative decisions on optimal utilization of scarce resources so whenever we have a limit whenever whenever we have limitation of resources and we want to make sure that we can have maximum utilization of resources so that time the discipline what came in picture that was called as operation research so basically uh, when we when we study operation research uh, so basically uh, when we study operation research the most uh, the the most important framework sorry the most important framework so the most important framework of operation research is lcp so when we study operation research the most important framework of working on operation research is basically lpp lpp uh, stand for uh, linear programming so uh, so what we are going to do so phase by phase we'll study this uh, like lpp is uh, the full form of lpp is linear programming problems so we we what will study uh, will study first what problem is all about and first is first thing is is to understand the problem once we have understood the problem a uh, mathematical model is being designed uh, to understand the problem so the mathematical model is something which can replicate the given problem and then mathematically through linear equation and in equation we try to find the solution of the problem and that solution is ultimately tested so that we can find out the the the, the required output for the problem so you can see this so you can see some problems are there so what what uh, what lpp is all about linear programming in through linear programming we will we'll try to figure out how we can find out the solution of the given problem the material whatever i am telling you is already i have shared uh, this material with all of you in the group uh, so i hope everyone can can have a look about on the material so basically uh, this subject no this the first chapter uh, when when you when you refer any book so you can refer any book either uh, for the subject you can refer uh, jk sharma you can refer jk sharma or uh, or you can refer one one book called kalavati okay so more of this i basically prefer these two book only or uh, there is a book of on of vk kapoor so you can refer any book doesn't matter which book you want to refer you can refer it and 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 basically chapter of this book uh, that in that first chapter they will they will talk about the theory part so the uh, so theory part of, in exam you may get a theory question about operation research what is the limitation of operation research how operation research came in picture what are the characteristics of operation research okay so what are the limitation of operation research what are the phase of operation research all that will come uh, uh, at the first chapter so the first chapter is a theory chapter like if you remember in statistics the first 
semester what we have studied. So there also the first chapter what we studied was theory. So here also the first chapter what we want to study is theory only. So in this we want to talk about what is operation research, why operation research came in picture, what are the different disciplines of operation research, what are the tactic of operation research, what are the different mathematical models, what are the operation research techniques. In operation research techniques, we are going to study programming, we are going to study queen theory, game theory, okay, we are going to study inventory control model, so we are going to study sequencing model, replacement model, network scheduling model, simulation, so a lot of things are there, all are theory part, theory part I am not covering, and theory part I, am, I will not focus more on theory part, so operation research, what operation research is all about? Operation research is about uh, devising a scientific method of, of formulating the specific proposals and plan uh, for adding the quantitative decisions on optimal utilization of scarce resources. So this is operation research. In the operation research, there are a lot of theory parts are there. Uh, that theory notes, I will give you before the exam or, uh, or the required books, whatever you will follow, either J.K. Sharma, or Kalavati or VK Kapoor, you will get the theory part. So, so, the, so that is not the problem. Now the next thing what we need to study uh, is to un uh, understand this problem. So, uh, so basically in exam, basically in exam, what you will get, get a uh, 10 marks, 15 marks question where they will give you a problem. They will give you a problem like this and, and they ask you to find the value. So they will ask you to find the value of this problem. So these kind of problem, they come under, when we talk about these problems, these kind of problem, they come under LPP, linear uh, programming problem. So if it comes for five marks, if it comes for five marks, so if it comes for five marks, so in five marks, what they will do? In five marks, they will expect you equation. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I am going to teach you only to create the equation. So we are doing the first basic thing. So in 5 marks we should know how to create the equation. So first we will we'll, we'll learn how to formulate the equation. Once you understood how to formulate the equation, then, then we will study how to use this equation to solve this. Okay, so what LPP is all about. So when we talk about LPP, what LPP is all about. So so basically, uh, when we so basically when we get the LPP problem, so what LPP is all about? So in in linear programming, whenever we get LPP in in LPP, whenever we have LPP problem, what we basically do in LPP? We first yes, sir. hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So, what LPP is all about? Whenever you get the problem like this, so, suppose mm -hmm. this is a problem. Suppose this is the problem. You can read the problem. What is the problem? A manufacturer produces two kinds of model. Suppose those two kinds of models are M1 and M2. A manufacturer manufactures two kinds of model. They are M1 and M2. Each model of type M1 uh, requires four hours of grinding and two hours of polishing. So each model of type M1 require four hours of grinding and two hours of polishing where each model where each model of type M2 uh, requires two hours of grinding and five hours of polishing. Okay, so now this problem what we're solving, in this problem what is given, so in this problem there is a manufacturer and that manufacturer makes two models M1 and M2. Okay, so these models, uh, what M, what is manufactured, these models, uh, they require two process, either, either they require grinding or they require polishing. So this company is manufacturing two models, M1 and M2, and these models require, uh, either they require grinding and either they require polishing. M1 require four hours of grinding and two hours of polishing, where M2 requires two hours of grinding and five hours of polishing. Okay, the manufacturer has two grinders and three polishers. Okay, each grinder works for 40 hours a week and each polisher works for 60 hours a week. So here uh, the company has 
two grinders. If you notice, this company has two grinder and three pressure. And one grinder works for 40 hours a week. So if they have two grinder. So the, so how many hours a grinder will work? 80 hours. And they have three polishers. And one polisher works 60 hours. So how many hours a polisher can work? 180 hours. Okay. Then they mentioned the profit on model M1. Profit on, on model M1 is rupees 3. And profit on model M2 is rupees 4. Okay. Whatever is produced in a week is sold in the market. How should the manufacturer allocate his production capacity of the two types of models so that he can make maximum profit in a week? Okay. So uh, everyone can read this question, right? Everyone can read this problem? Okay. So in, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, so in exam, if you get a five marks question, in exam, if you get a five marks question, they just want you to write the equation for this problem. The same thing you had studied in PU2, uh, in second PU, you would have studied LPP. Again, we are studying the same thing. If you prepare for UPSC exam, again, the same thing will come. So, question research is very important subject. So, in talking about this problem, so there's a company, uh, there's a manufacturer, uh, they are manufacturing two kinds of model. Uh, one is M1 and M2. These two models, uh, when when you're manufacturing, they, they go through two manufacturing phase. One is grinding and another one is polishing. And they are given you the time. Then how many time, how many hours they need for grinding and polishing, and the, how many grinders they have. So they have two grinders and they have three polishers. And one grinder works for 40 hours a week, and one polisher works. 60 hours a week. So the total what you have, that is also given. And whatever you manufacture, M1 and M2, so the profit what you get on M1 is rupees 3, and the profit what you get on M2 is rupees 4. And they ask you, what is the maximum the company can get? So this is the problem. What is the maximum profit the company can get? Now, we'll, we'll solve this problem. So, so we'll solve this problem. Okay. <coughs> oh my god. So uh so we'll solve okay. okay. Now sorry, why this is coming? <laughs> Copying this problem and I'm putting in MS Word so that we can solve this problem. Okay, now uh, everyone can see this problem. Okay, now uh, when we are solving this problem, how to solve this problem? You can see so the manufacturer produces two types of model uh, M1 and M2, manufacturer produces two types of M1 and M2. So in exam, you write the problem like this way. Uh, each model of type M1, so so the grinding, it goes to two courses. One is grinding, and the next thing is, is polishing. So each model of type M1 requires four hours of grinding and two, and two hours of polishing. So each model of type M1 requires four hours of grinding and two hours of polishing. While each model of type M2 requires two hours of grinding and five hours of polishing. Okay. So you'll write like this. Okay. Then the manufacturer, how many grinders the company have? So the company have two grinders. So the, 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 the grinders the company have is two grinders. And they have three polishers. It works for 40 hours in a week. What is the maximum hour they can work? Okay. Grinder can work for 40 hours. And they have two grinders. So what is the maximum grinding you can do in a week? 80 hours. Okay. Because they have two grinders. And one grinder can work for 40 hours. So how much grinding you can do? You can do 80 hours. And the company has eight polishers. And each polisher can work for 10 hours. So how many polishing you can do? You can do 180 hours. 
okay is this clear everyone okay uh, so the company uh, companies manufacturing uh, please do not write anything on this so the company has uh, the company has uh, is manufacturing uh, two models m1 and m2 and they go through two process one is grinding and the next one is polishing one grinding uh, takes 40 hours a week and one polishing takes 60 hours in a week so the so they have to grind they have to grinder so the maximum hour they can do is is 80 hour and they have three polisher and one polisher can work 60 hours in a week so the maximum polishing they can do is 180 hour okay now when we talk about profit when we talk about profit so when we talk about profit so when we talk about profit so here the profit on m1 is rupees 3 and profit on m2 profit on m1 is rupees 3 and profit on m2 is rupees 4 okay now whatever is produced is sold in the market so how should the manufacturer allocate his production capacity so that they make maximum profit in week okay this is a problem everyone read this problem yes so okay so what you, what you will do uh, whenever you get these kind of problem so these kind of problem comes under linear programming so how to solve these kind of problem so the first thing the first thing what we do for solving the problem we write the decision variable the first thing for solving the problem we write the decision variable so what are decision variable so basically your decision uh, in s whenever we are solving lpp the first thing what we do we decide our decision variable so what is your decision variable to decide the decision variable you can see the objective what is the objective objective is to make the maximum profit and that maximum profit on what the maximum profit on two models m1 and m2 and the time what they giving you is a week okay so what is your decision variable decision variable means what you can manufacture so what i can manufacture so what i can manufacture so what i can manufacture i can decide let x1 is the number of units x1 is the number of units model m1 model m1 manufactured in a week so x1 is the number of units of model m1 which is manufactured in a week and x2 you can decide you, i i have written x1 and x2 you can write a b you can write any variable that doesn't matter x2 means number of units you can write x2 as number of units of model m2 number of units of model m2 uh, which is manufactured in a week which is manufactured in a week so because they have given you the time period of one week so what i have thought of i have thought of two variable called x1 and x2 so x1 is the number of unit of model m1 what i can manufacture and x2 is the number of units of model m2 what i can manufacture in a week so first you have to you have to design you have to think about the decision variable okay so i have thought of the decision variables what are my decision variables x1 and x2 okay uh, please do not write anything Uh, so that that two decision variable, what I have thought is is x one and x two. Okay, now 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 whenever when it once you decide your decision variable, the next thing what you have to do, you have to decide the objective function. So what is your objective function? So you write the objective function. So you write the objective function because whenever whenever we talk about optimality, linear programming. When you talk about linear programming, linear programming. is all about optimality whenever you talk about linear programming in linear programming we talk about optimal utilization of resource okay linear programming in exam when you get a theory question also you write optimal utilization of resource so optimal utilization how you can get either you will get optimal utilization by doing maximization of whatever you have or by doing minimization <coughs> if cost is given we'll do we'll minimize it if profit is given revenue is given will maximize it so what is my objective function so my so i am manufacturing x1 unit of m1 and x2 unit of m2 so what i can manufacture so my objective is to manufacture 
to objective is to maximize my profit on 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 one unit of m1 i am getting 3 rupees profit on one unit of m2 i am getting 4 rupees profit so i'll write objective function you write of maximization of z you write maximization of z and one unit of m1 you are getting how much you are getting profit 3 rupees and one unit of m2 you are getting 4 rupees profit so you write objective function and maximization of z is equal to 3x1 plus 4x2 this is your objective function you want to maximize this if you make one unit of m1 you will get 3 rupees profit if you make one unit of m2 you will get 4 rupees profit so suppose if you manufacture x1 unit of m1 and x2 unit of m2 so the maximum profit you can get is 3x1 plus 4x2 okay this is your objective function once you write your objective function then you have to write your decision variable then after this you will write subject to constraint what do you want i want to maximize 3x1 plus 4x2 this i want to maximize so you want to maximize this yes i want to maximize this but is like you can simply maximize it like i'll say i want to study i want to study whole day so i'll say okay 24 hours you have so you want to study whole day can you study 24 hours no so no there is a problem what is a problem you have to sleep so those are constraints so the company want to many maximize the profit in a week okay on one unit of m1 they get 3 rupees profit on one unit of m2 they get 4 rupees profit so the maximum profit they can get is the maximum profit what they can get is 3x1 plus 4x2 okay then 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 in order to get this profit they have a constraint what constraint they have so they have constraint okay chandan what doubt you have chandan i think i have a doubt yeah now they have a constraint the what constraint they have they want to maximize the profit how, how much they can maximize the profit 3x1 plus 4x2 in order to maximize the profit they have a constraint what is the constraint they have they have constraint that the grinding what they are doing the grinding can be done only maximum 80 hours in a week the polishing whatever they are doing the polishing they can do maximum 180 hours in a week so grinding they cannot do more than 80 hours polishing they cannot do more than 180 hours how you got 80 hours sir because one grinder works 40 hours and they have two grinder so the maximum hours of grinding can be done 80 hours and one polisher can work for 60 hours in a week and they have three polisher so what is the maximum polishing they can do 180 hours so i don't think anyone have doubt about this so the maximum hour of grinding they can do is 80 hours and the maximum hours of polishing they can do is 180 hours okay now so what what constraint they have one first constraint is grinding where where one unit of m1 require 4 hours of grinding and one unit of m2 requires 2 hours of grinding okay and the maximum grinding they can have is 80 hours in a week so you will write this equation so subject to constraint 4x1 so the, you will write the constraint 4x1 plus 2x2 the constraint you will write here so the constraint you will write is what is the first constraint grinding constraint so 4x1 plus 2x2 is less than or it less than or equal to 80 hours because you can either you can use 80 hours of grinding or less than 80 hours you cannot use more than 80 hours in a week so the maximum hours you have the maximum hours you have for grinding is 80 hours so when you do grinding the maximum you can do grinding is 80 hours one unit of m1 requires four unit four hours of grinding and one unit of m2 requires two hours of grinding so <coughs> what is the maximum you can do grinding 80 hours so that's why you write the first equation as 4x1 plus 2x2 is less than or equal to 80 hours either you can use 80 hours for grinding in a week or less than 80 hours this is the first constraint okay now what is the next constraint the next constraint is polishing the polishing you will write 2 hours on m1 and 5 hours on m2 so you will write 2x1 plus 5x2 x1 plus 5x2 is less than or equal to 180 hours so 2x1 plus 5x2 is less than or equal to 180 hours these are your two constraints so what is your first constraint when you do 
grinding you can maximum use grinding for 80 hours and one unit of m1 require 4 hours of grinding and one unit of m2 requires 2 hours of the grinding and the maximum time what you have for grinding is 80 hours and the maximum time what you have for polishing is 180 hours so these are your constraints so your objective function is to maximize this 3x1 plus 4x2 <coughs> when you are trying to maximize 3x1 plus 4x2 you have this constraint for what is your first constraint you first this is your first constraint that the first constraint what you have is for grinding so the first constraint what you have is grinding okay okay so the first constraint what you have grinding and the maximum grinding you can do is 80 hour and the second constraint you have is polishing and the maximum time you can use for polishing is 180 hours okay once you write once you're done with these two constraints after that we write non-negativity restriction after this we write non-negativity restriction so in non-negativity restriction we write that our x1 and our x2 should be either 0 or greater than 0 they cannot be less than 0 then uh, you everyone will say yes this is this is common sense that uh, that what you are manufacturing it cannot be negative yes that is common sense that whatever you are manufacturing cannot be negative maths don't know this no because in maths this x1 and x2 are integers okay we are we are what we are doing we are creating a mathematical model what we are doing we are creating a mathematical model and we want mathematics to solve this problem so when we want mathematics to solve this problem and there what mathematics is uh, the mathematics is solving this mathematical problem that it has to maximize 3x1 plus 4x2 and keeping these two constraints in the mind. So in mathematics, we try to solve these two problems. It can be possible that maths can give you negative value also. Imagine in, pl in place of plus sign. Imagine if here there would be a minus sign. Imagine, imagine if there would be minus sign here. Then maybe what they can do to maximize 3x1 minus 4x2, they may give you negative value of x2. Why negative value? Anyone who understand maths, they can tell. Minus into minus is plus. That's why what we want, uh, we, we want to tell the this mathematics that this problem, what I'm talking about, this problem is actually a real life problem where you are trying to maximize profit these two constraint. So you have to make sure that what you are giving as output the answer it should be positive answer because what you are manufacturing it cannot be negative okay so this is basically lpp so for writing this you will get five marks in exam for writing this you will get five marks in the exam so uh, if you get theory so the from first chapter uh, you get a question then we start solving this so this this is the this is the this is the mathematical formula what you need to write Okay, this is the mathematical formula, what you have to write. So once you write this formula, once you, once you write this formula, so once, once you write, once you write this formula, so once you write this formula, so once you write this formula, once you write this formula, if I ask you, once you write this formula, if I ask you to solve this, if I ask you to solve this, just for writing this, you will get 5 marks. Okay. So either you get 5 marks question, in which they will give you a question. Uh, if you see the previous year question paper, so you will get a you will get a 5 marks question, where for writing this equation, you will get 5 marks. Now, you will say, sir, okay, sir, I understood. For writing this equation, I will get 5 marks. Then what? Now, you'll say, sir, I want the value of x1 and x2. So, if you want the value of x1 and x2, to get the, to get the value of x1 and x2, to get the value of x1 and x2, we basically, what we basically do, we, we, we basically follow, to get the value of x1 and x2, we either follow graphical method, we either follow graphical method to find the value of x1 and x2, or we follow simplex method to find the value of x1 and x2 or in, in, in MS Excel we use a solver 
in ms excel we use solver to find the value of x1 and x2 okay guys i hope everyone is listening to me so once you once you design this equation once you design this equation once you design this equation after that if you ask me sir how can i get the answer for x1 and x2 in exam you get a 10 marks question in 10 marks question they 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 expect you write the equation and then solve it also or you get a 5 marks question where you just need to write the equation okay so the easiest way of solving is graphical method the easiest way of solving is graphical method so and then the, the this simplex method is the complicated form of solving the problem okay simplex method is difficult in simplex method in exam you will get 10 marks question it is very complicated to solve the question by simplex method graphical method 100% it will come in exam and in next class i'll discuss the graphical method or through how to by using graphical method how you can solve and solver is a function in ms excel so in ms excel if you go to ms excel in ms excel there is a function called solver so uh, in ms excel so uh, if you go to data under data what if analysis so here uh, there is a function uh, there is there is a function called solver so through solver you can solve we need to install it so i'll show you i'll make one video for that how to use solver so, so that you can solve this problem solver is not important this solving this problem through ms excel uh, it is not important for you uh because uh because uh in exam they will not ask expect you to solve the problem by using ms excel so i'll make a video for that how you can solve the problem by using solver in ms excel do that thing do anyone who is interested for for learning ms excel they can use it otherwise for other people is not so important for you what is important either the graphical method for you what is important either the graphical method or either the simplex method so the so the first what we are studying what what we are studying we are just studying how to get the answer for this problem how to get the answer for this problem how i can get the answer for that problem that is what i am interested about okay so this is the problem this is the problem and, and this is the way how i write the equation for this problem anyone have any doubt ask please ask me anyone have any doubt no sir so for every problem whenever you get a problem uh, that is lpp problem for every lpp problem we write the objective function once we write the objective function uh, objective function we based on our decision variable the objective function what we write we write our objective function based on the decision variable once we wrote the objective function then we write our constraints to get the objective function you have some constraint so we write our constraints and once you written your constraint and then you give the non negativity restriction for that okay now uh, you can open i have sent you this uh, uh, one one pdf file you can open that pdf file and you can solve this question the see this question number 2 try to solve this problem see uh, this uh, class uh, this one hour class is there but i think this zoom if this class zoom uh, will get log off after 40 minutes so in between if the class will get log off again i'll send you the link so that we can finish the remaining hours so i don't till how long this this will work because i'm using first time okay now uh, every please open this everyone this uh, question number 2 uh, uh, in your group i have sent pdf file uh, in that uh, see question number 2 we will solve this question number 2 everyone open this question number 2 everyone please see this everyone please open already i have sent this question
try everyone solve this question so what is given a company manufactures two product a and b a company manufactures two product a and b these product are processed in same machine it takes 10 minute to process one unit of product a and two minute to process one unit of product b and the machine operates for maximum 35 hours in a week the product a requires product a requires 1 hour 1 k the product a requires 1 kg a product a requires 1 kg and product b requires 0.5 kg of raw material per unit and the maximum supply of raw material is 600 kg per week okay so you can write all this so you can write all this so so the company manufactures two product a and b the company manufactures two product a and b so uh, time so the time you can write to make one unit of a you need 10 minute so it takes 10 minute to process one unit of a and and 2 minute to process one unit of b okay so the maximum time what you have is 35 hours this is given 35 hours and if you notice they are in minute so what you can do you can convert the hour into minute So thirty-five hour is equal to how many minute? So that is two one zero zero minute. So I have converted this hour into minute. So a company manufactures two unit. So A and B. Uh, for one unit of A, it requires ten minute, and for one unit of B, it requires two minute. And the maximum time they have is thirty-five hours in a week. Uh, here the time is again very important. So the time is thirty-five hours. Product A requires one kg. so raw now talking about raw material talking about raw material so if i talk about raw material so product a requires product a requires 1 kg product a requires 1 kg and product b requires 0.5 kg so if you talk about raw material product a requires 1 kg and product b requires 0.5 kg and maximum raw material what they have is 600 kg per week the maximum raw material they have is 600 kg per week the market constraint on product b is known uh, to be minimum of 100 unit per week so minimum when you are manufacturing b minimum you manufacture 800 unit okay and the product a cost 5 rupees now talking about cost so talking about cost so the so cost cost price if you talk about cost price product a requires 5 rupees product a requires 5 rupees per unit and and sold at 10 rupees product a requires 5 rupees per unit and sold at 10 rupees per unit and product b requires 6 rupees per unit and sold at 8 rupees per unit okay this much information is given to us and they are asking us determine the number of unit of a and b which you can manufacture to maximize the profit so here they given the cost price and selling price and they are asking us to talk in profit here they given us the cost price and selling price and they are asking us to talk in the term of profit so everyone can determine the profit of based on cost price and selling price. because everyone knows profit is selling price minus cost price okay okay everyone you are, i hope you are understanding so the profit yeah. one unit of of profit on one unit of a is 5 rupees the profit on one unit of b is is 2 rupees and the the this constraint this is one constraint constraint number 1 and this is your second constraint the second constraint is of raw materials to maximize the profit in in a week so what you will do after this you write your decision variable so your decision variable you write your decision variable so in in decision variable you write let x1 a uh, number of units x1 is the number of units of product a x1 is the number of unit of product a 
manufactured in a week manufactured in a week manufactured in a week so x1 is the number of unit of product a which is manufactured in a week and and x2 is the number of of number of units of product b which is manufactured same way so number of units of product b which is manufactured in a week which is manufactured in a week so so i decide what is x1 what is x2 so x1 is the number of unit of of product a what i am manufacturing in a week and x2 is the number of unit of product b what i am manufacturing in a week and i'll write my objective function so what is my objective function in write my objective function so in objective function i write maxima of z this is the way how we write objective function where where one unit of a i am getting 5 rupees profit and one unit of b i am getting 2 rupees profit so i'll write objective function as 5x1 objective function as 5x1 plus 2x2 this is my objective function then i'll write my constraint what constraint i have so then i'll write my constraint what constraint i have so the first constraint i'll write the first constraint what i'll write i'll write that that the processing time what i'm using i cannot use more than 2100 minutes so 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 i'll write and one unit of a i need 10 minute unit of b i need 2 minute so so i'll write processing time that for one unit of a i need 10 minute so i'll write 10x2 and one unit of b i need 2 minute so 10x1 plus 2x2 so i'll write x1 plus 2 so i'll write 10x1 x2 the maximum i can use is 2100 minutes the maximum i can use is 2100 minute this is my first constraint okay so maximum i can use is 2100 minute then this i write the second string that of of raw material that on one unit of a i need 1 kg and one unit of i need 0.5 kg and the maximum i can use is 600 kg so then for raw material write for raw material i'll write uh, so 1 x1 plus 0.5 x2 the maximum i can use them is which i can use 600 kg so this is my second so when you see your when you see your when you see this so the for the raw material when you see the raw material on one unit of a you need 1 kg so for to make to manufacture a you need 1 kg of of raw material to manufacture one unit of a and you need 0.5 kg of raw material to make one unit of b okay so if you manufacture x1 unit of a and x2 unit of b so the total raw material you need is 1x1 plus 0.5x2 is equal to less than or equal to 600 kg okay and the third constraint if you notice here in the third constraint if you notice here they wrote that the market constraint on product b is known to be minimum 800 unit every week every week you have to make minimum 800 unit of b so then you write the third constraint you third constraint that b what you manufactured it should be minimum 800 unit this is your third constraint the b what you manufacturing is minimum 800 unit okay and then once you're done with then you'll write whatever you're manufacturing should be positive value this is called non negativity restriction so if you write this much your work is done so for this problem a company manufactured two product a and b are uh, these product are processed in the same machine it takes 10 minute to process one unit of product a and 2 minute for each unit of product b and the machine operate for the maximum of 34 hours in a week okay and then uh, it is written uh, to uh, that product a requires 1 kg and product b requires 0.5 kg of raw material 
and the supply 600 kg per week okay and the market constant on product b is known to minimum of 800 unit per week product a cost 5 rupees and sold at 10 rupees product b cost 6 rupees and sold at 8 rupees determine the number of unit what they can manufacture to maximize the profit so the objective function here is the maximizing the profit this is your objective function so whenever you read the problem always see the objective function what is the objective function here the objective function is maximization here your objective function is maximization you want to maximize it this is your objective function your objective function is to maximize once you think about maximization okay your objective function is maximization okay then how to maximize it they are talking about profit so how you get the profit so if you see in this problem here how to get profit so, so to get the profit i get the profit by subtracting selling price minus cost price so i get profit on one unit of of a and b so then i want to maximize the profit in a week so i i thought that i manufacture x1 unit of a and x2 unit of b and that way what i will do i i will i'll maximize my profit so i'll maximize my profit like that way okay so i'll maximize you i'll maximize profit like that way now this you maximize the profit so on one unit of on a you are getting 5 rupees profit on one unit of b you are getting 2 rupees profit so if you make x1 unit of a and x2 unit of b the maximum profit you can make this now in order to get this much profit you have a constraint what is your constraint one constraint is of you, that that maximum that 35 hours you can work next constraint is of raw material that maximum you have 600 kg of raw material and then the third constraint is that that product b what you are manufacturing uh, you will have to manufacture minimum 800 unit of product b and the last constraint we write that whatever you are manufacturing it should be positive value because because real life situation you are putting in mathematics so when you real life situation in mathematics you have to make sure that the answer what you are getting it should be positive answer so this is the we write this so and now we are only learning how to create the equation now what i am teaching you i am teaching you how to create the equation so we have done two problem of of how to create an equation so like this uh, the pdf what i have sent you in this see you have more problems like this so you can you can go through these problems and every problem is like the way i did the first two problem so all other problem they are more or less the like same way so whatever i have done so is more of you do like this you have to learn how to formulate the equation okay you are understanding right you have to learn how to formulate the equation if you learn how to formulate the equation then things will become very easy for you so you have to learn how to formulate the equation once you learn how to formulate the equation you can do everything very fast okay so anyone can try this question try this question everyone so i have given you in this pdf i have given you seven questions okay seven questions are there everyone uh, uh, i have given you seven questions everyone uh, please solve uh, these seven questions uh, so uh, if you problem then only it will helpful for you okay so uh, i uh, what i am expecting that tomorrow again i have class at 11:30 so uh, everyone should try these seven questions in, in case if you able to solve then i then i will solve this problem arpita please do not talk uh, everyone uh, try to solve this question this question how will you solve this question so if firm the firm manufactures three product uh, a b and c the profit on a the profit on a they are given you the profit on a b and c 
and they have two machine m1 and m2 given you the time m1 and m2 have uh, these many machine unit so the maximum time what they have for this m1 is 2000 so time on m2 what you have is 2500 and the must manufacture 100 unit of a and 200 unit of b and 50 unit of c but not more than 150 unit of a so set the lpp to solve the problem very simple so again for this if you see again i'll write again again it suppose i am assuming that the firm manufacture x1 unit of a and x2 unit of b and x3 unit of b. so the the objective fun the objective function you will write is 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 4x3 this is your objective function okay so your decision what is your decision variable so the decision variable uh, what is your decision variable you write decision variable as let let the firm manufacture so yes please do not talk so you write the decision variable as let the firm manufacture x1 unit of a x2 unit of b and x3 unit of c and and on one unit of a you are getting 3 rupees profit one unit of b you get 2 rupees profit one one unit of c you get 4 rupees profit this is the max what you can get okay then write your constraint what is your constraint then you write your constraint so subject constraint then you write your constraint so what are your constraints so your constraint are so the uh, that 4x1 plus 3x2 plus 5x3 is less than or equal to 2000 machine minutes so these all are in minutes if you notice these all are in minute and this is also in minute so no need to change any unit so for this these three product what are manufacturing a b and c they are two through two machine machine m1 and machine m2 okay so this is for machine m1 for machine m2 i'll write 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 4x3 it should be less than or equal to 2500 machine minute very simple very simple. okay so these are machine m1 and m2 this is the machine constant then the firm should manufacture minimum 100 unit of a so the a what you manufacture a what you manufacture should be minimum 100 unit and it cannot be more than 150 unit so a what you manufacture it should be between 100 and 150 okay and then for b 200 unit of so the b what the firm manufacture it should be minimum 200 unit and for c it should be minimum 50 unit and for the c it should be minimum 50 units and whatever you manufacture it should be a positive variable that's it then you get five marks simple nothing you have to do in this problem you just need to write the equation you write the equation your work is done you simply you write the equation you wrote the equation your work is done okay very simple these problems are not at all difficult problem okay so uh, here they they are talking about uh, three product the company and this problem they are talking about three product see the profit on one unit of a b and c is 3 rupees 2 rupees and 4 rupees so this is my objective function to maximize them okay then subject to constraint i write my constraint what are my constraint the first constraint is that the machine m1 i cannot use machine m1 for more than 2000 minute and i cannot use machine m2 the machine m1 i cannot use more than 2000 minute and machine m2 i cannot use more than 2500 unit and when i am manufacturing them that minimum of 100 unit of m1 a minimum of 100 unit of m1 i have to manufacture and 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 i cannot i should not manufacture more than 150 unit of 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 a then for b i have to manufacture minimum 200 unit of b 
and I have to manufacture minimum 50 units. So this, this, that's all. Write that in the form of equation, your work is done. How to solve this equation, I'll teach you. How to solve this equation, we'll learn. We'll, to find the value of x1, x2, and x3, we'll either use graphical method, or we use simplex method, or we use solver to get this value. How to get this value, we learn. We learn in further classes. But right now, you have to understand how to write equation. First, learn how to write the equation. If you learn how to write the equation, solving is not a big thing. Here, because three variables are there, so you cannot use graphical method. So when we talk about graphical method, so in graphical method, we draw to like this. We write this x-axis, we write y-axis, and then by drawing graph, we solve them. So by drawing graph, we solve them. So gra for graphical method, the variable should be two variables. Now here, three variables are there. So by graphical method, you cannot solve it. Graphical method, you cannot solve it. So I'll teach you how to solve this problem by using simplex method. How to solve this, how to get the value of x1, x2, x3, we learn that. But right now, you learn how to write the equation. So I've given you uh, seven questions here. Here, seven questions are there. So these seven questions, everyone, please try solving this problem. Uh, these seven questions, everyone, please try to solve this problem. I will, I will discuss uh, tomorrow. I'll discuss the, the remaining five questions. I'll discuss the solution of those five questions with all of you. So, any, uh, so anyone have any doubt? Whatever I have done, anyone any doubt? This problem, whatever we have done. So, uh, so uh, I believe you, you, you all are having great time, and you have, you have learned this because this is very important. Uh, that last minute, if you think that one one week before the exam, you open the question paper and you'll get the answer, it will be very difficult for you at that time. So make sure that you start uh, solving this problem right now. Refer books like Palavati or B K Kapoor or. J.K. Sharma for operation research and, and that will definitely will help you. Anyone have previous year question paper? If anyone have, please send me that question uh, because uh, from day one I want to discuss the problem which came in exam last four or five years, whatever the questions. Uh, if anyone have, please send me those questions so that simultaneously we will discuss those problem in class. So I, I hope everyone understood whatever I have done. Anyone have any doubt? last time I'm asking you and then I'll wind up the class. Okay, so so nobody is responding anything. So I believe that you understood whatever I have done. So uh, so so I'll I'll wind up the class now. So uh, thank you everyone. Thank you for the class. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, attendance, I think somebody has mailed me the attendance. So, I'll use the same attendance for that. Okay, sir.